Hi there, in this next series of art classes I'm going to show you how to make this tea party or tea shop. Um, I've called mine the Strand Cafe because that's the little cafe close to me but you can call yours whichever cafe you've got nearby just to make it feel a little bit local. I'm thinking about something like that lovely uh, one in Bridgewater called Daisy May's Tea Shop which is just exactly the sort of thing I'm trying to get because I think she would love these little different pretty uh, teacups and tea saucers and teapots. So they are built up of, in, on this one I've got some painted but I think for the purpose of this class we're just going to use felt tips. Um, and they're all a mishmash of different patterns, some bold and some a little bit more delicate. So I'm going to just in this first video to show you how we might do a series of patterns. Okay, so as you can see, I've started some here. I've got myself um, some felt tips, mostly in the kind of orangey red, so in, within the kind of red tones, really. Um, I've also uh, thrown in a little uh, opposite colour, which is a green, to just add a little bit of difference to that. So these felt tips, I'll tell you about in a minute. What I'm going to show you now is you can do um, a contrast, and this actually is going to look brilliant when you come to make it into teacups and things. I really like a contrast of very bold patterns and then alongside that some really kind of intricate fiddly ones. I think they're going to look really good. So we've got bold, intricate, bold um, and I'm just going to do a little bit more of this one here to show you. Now these are, um, cool. I'm lucky they have two sides, they have a kind of fat side like that and then a very thin side. They're called twin markers. I got mine in the sale actually because they're quite expensive. If you can get them in the sale that'd be really good. If you haven't got twin markers, ordinary felt tips, any kind of felt tips will do. So I'm going to just um, show you what I might do with this one which is just circles. I sometimes like to kind of go around the spaces in between because that makes an interesting pattern. So it becomes less regular. And kind of fun. And that looks good with the green against the red. So just playing around with the little spaces in between my circles. I'm just kind of making it up as I go along. There's no great plan here, it's just a nice relaxing thing to do. Okay, so you get the gist of that one. Now, this one here, I was thinking about that Daisy Maze, and if you can't think of a pattern, what you can easily do is just write letters over and over again, and that starts to make a pattern. So I've got DM for Daisy Maze, so I might go MD from this one. M D M D, And that repeated starts to create a pattern. Daisy, maze. Okay, and then I did go in and start to add like a little bit of a fill in to give it a bit of color, a bit of pink there. So that's another thing you could do. So let's just Take that idea again of doing letters if you can't think of a pattern. So I've got my chunky orange here. Um, I might use um, an S as the start of my name, Sally. And I'm just going to repeat S's along there. And then I've got my surname, which is Clark. I don't know, I might go for a red there now. So, have some C's. So any shape repeated starts to make a pattern. Let's go back to my S's. Oh, 
Yeah, I quite like that. That's looking quite cool now. Okay, and I will just continue on. I did do a bit of a little bit of a loose grid to um, mark out my where my patterns are going to form. Um, I'm not keeping to it particularly, but it, it, it doesn't really matter. So that's for our first video. And in number two, we'll um, work out how we can start to draw the teacups and things and put them together. And I'll look forward to seeing you in number two.